Good morning everyone, I'm Gary Martin and today we're going to be testing the 2019 P790 against the 2021 P790. And there's a little bit of a story behind this one because as you may know if you watch my channel I'm going to be on a challenge to break 70. So I'm going to be starting a new series to break 70 and I'm on the search for a new set of irons and when I read up about the 2021 P790 it sounded a little bit of me, you know, it's a forged head design. It's aimed at a sort of a mid handicap golfer progressing into single figures. And you know, I'm going to put my hands up. That's where I feel like my game is at the minute. You know, I'm not playing much golf and I really need some help. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one and comparing it against the 2019 model, which, you know, a lot of golfers like. It's got a few criticisms, which we'll talk about, and we're going to see if the new version has sort of, you know, improved on, on the criticisms that the P790, the 2019 model, got. Because if it, if it has, it would be an iron that I'm really interested in. So let's, uh, let's get stuck in. So I've really had a good warm up, I'm really loose, I've, um, I've picked out some tailor-made TP5, so we're going to be keeping things consistent here. I've even got both clubs in exactly the same specs, we've got half an inch longer and we've got stiff modus 120 shafts, so 2 degrees upright as well, so they're pretty much my spec and I'm fully loose. So what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at the data to compare the 2019 790 against the 2021 model and throughout the testing as well tell you a little bit about feel you know how the club looks and how it sounds because I think that's really important for sort of you mid to low handicap golfers I think feel and sound are, you know sort of really sometimes not taken into consideration enough you know I think a lot of people like look at the golf club and they look at the profile of it but sometimes when I ask sort of mid handicap golfers how it feels they don't know how to explain it, you know, they don't know the difference. When they're testing different golf clubs, they can't tell me the difference in feel. And I think, you know, that's where maybe a lower in handicap golf could maybe help you because we could maybe, you know, guide you a little bit on how the club feels. So as you do get better and you sort of, you know, you start to recognise feel and, and, and sound and stuff like that, that, you know, we can guide you into what you might like. So... I'm hoping this doesn't feel too hollow. I tried a G2, G425 early in the week, just out of a matter of interest. You know, I don't think I were ever going to game it, but I tried it. And I'll, well, I'll tell you why, because I used to work with a chap who had some, and when I'd forgot my clubs, he used to let me play with them. And I always used to play well with them, although I didn't particularly like the, the look or the feel of them, but they were easy to use. So I thought I'll try some, because you know, obviously I'm, I'm striving for something that's more forgiving. But I just wouldn't be prepared to sacrifice, you know, the feel and, and the, the feedback from the iron. I mean, the G425, very clicky, very hollow. And, you know, it does a job. It's, it's easy to use for the, the higher handicap golf for progressing into mid handicap. But I think that was probably a step too far. But these ones are described as, you know, more mid handicap progressing to single finger handicap. So I'm a bit more, they're maybe more, you know, suited to where I am at the minute. So let's start off with the 2019 model. Let's say I'm fully warmed up. Put some good swings on these guys. That one was solid. So 177. I mean that's incredible distance. There's no no wonder, you know, so many people are using these irons because seven iron wise I'd probably be using mine 165, so certainly quite an increase there and felt solid i mean first impressions wise I'm, I'm moving from a blade here you've got to remember that top line does look very thick to me but i guess it's something i could get used to because it felt absolutely solid that one really did Absolutely. I'm not being striking my I couldn't have hit two irons as well as that in a row with my own clubs and I've not made any swing changes here guys you know I'm swinging it exactly how I have been with the, the eye blade 
But I guess it's just the confidence that something like this gives you. It doesn't feel too hollow either, it still feels solid. Still feels solid. That one I didn't catch quite so well, it felt a little bit bottomy but again it's still, I don't think you'll even tell when you look at the data, I don't think you're even going to tell. We'll have a look at the smash factor on that third one to see if it dropped, but numbers wise look very similar. Now, what I would say about this is that the criticism with the 2019 model is that you can get knuckle balls. And I'm just sort of, you know, wondering whether that would be something that would put me off as a low handicap golfer. I wouldn't want to feel like, you know, on a tight lie or, you know, out the semi rough, maybe a bit of water on the face, I was going to get a flare because when you've only got, or when you've got no shots to play with, you know, you can't afford it. You know, you can't afford to be, you know, through the back of a green and looking at a double bogey. Uh, through no fault of your own so that would be that's why I'm looking forward to trying the new model actually because from what I've read you know you're not going to get that anymore but uh, so far these are absolutely solid again th that kind of swing is one that I would have I'd have been terrible with the eye blade it weren't a good strike it's dropped the smash factor quite a lot. I think it were a bit toey, but ball flight wise, shape of shot, I think I'd have still hit the green. I might have come up a bit short, but I'd have hit the green. And I, I know with that swing, with my eye blade, I'd have missed the green left. There's no doubt about it. So could I game these? It seems to have gone a bit pear-shaped on these last few shots, but there it is, you know, it's always going to be honest on this channel. And we'll compare the 2019 model against the 2021. So I'm going to hit some balls with the 2021 model. Now, obviously I've already had a chance to have a look at this, and I'm sure you guys have if you're watching this review. And I keep saying this, I don't know how manufacturers manage to keep improving the look of golf clubs, because they've re obviously reconditioned it or they've you know they've, they've improved the look of it it's almost exactly an identical shape I think it is actually identical in shape but they've just tarted it up a little bit on the outside it looks incredible it looks such a sleek finish from the top here the top line looks exactly the same I need to just swap this over don't I so reading the magazine what I saw from a lot of sort of youtubers and and you know tech guys where is that these clubs are going to be really easy to to combine with the 770 so that could be an option for someone like me you know maybe splitting the set and possibly going six iron up in the 790 and seven iron down in the 770 but uh, I guess I'll know a little bit more about that once I've tried the 770 which I will I'll do it in this review actually I'll do it because we've got the 770 here to see whether I think they'd combine well. Again, felt very solid. Still not a great smash factor, so I'm saying it feels solid. I'm, I'm probably hitting it toe and heel, but I just don't know, because uh, the smash factor was down there. Guess it's good for your confidence though, that isn't it? You know, that's what I'm lacking at a minute. That one felt better. And it were it were a higher smash factor. So you still can feel a good and a bad shot. Um, you know, they don't completely take away all the feel. I can still identify a good and a bad strike, but it's not as significant as what it would be with the eye blade. You know, I could I could tell you the ball flight with my eyes closed with the eye blade. On here, I think I would read a bad ball flight, but then when I looked at the monitor, it'd be a lot straighter than I were expecting. Which I guess is what you want, isn't it, when you're not, you're not hitting the ball so well. I think these are going to be a great aim for anybody that's working on the swing because I am at the minute. I've got a couple of swing forts and uh, they're not, the clubs aren't embarrassing me too much as I'm trying to 
implement a couple of changes. I'm not going to hit any more with this one. I'll tell you, I've only hit four. I will, I'll hit one more and then we'll have a look at the, the comparison. I'm going to actually just get the 770. So I'll show you some close ups as well of these to see how much difference these because I've not actually put them side by side myself yet, so I'm actually quite keen to get over to the rack and, and pull that one off the shelf to have a look. Right, we'll check that day trap first of that. I'm going to get the 770. I'm disappointed. I'm actually disappointed because the finishes are different on these. They've, um, they're two different finishes. I don't think I could combine them on first impression. I'll show you these. So that's the 770, which has got quite a shiny, sort of polished finish. And then we've got this with the sort of dull, the new finish, which I actually like the look of a lot more. I don't, I couldn't combine them two in a set. For me, just, it wouldn't work. I'm um, aesthetically, I, I'm, I, like, I have to like the look of what I'm using as well, you know, it's not just about playability, they've got to look well in the bag, it would look a bit mismatched to me, you know, I don't think I could do that, um, but I do hope they restyle this one so that they pair up quite well. So just look at the data here, starting with the 2019 model, and what I found quite interesting is the numbers here. You know, you can see there's quite a big dispersion distance between a good strike and a bad strike. So we've got 163 as, you know, the worst strike and 183 as the best strike. So that's quite a significant distance dispersion. And that's what sort of a lot of people sort of said about the TaylorMade 2019 model. That was a big criticism. And that's something that TaylorMade have tried to address with the 2021 model. And I think they've got it right. You know, if you look at the strikes here... You know, and you'll, you'll remember from me hitting the balls, I weren't happy with all them strikes, but the dispersion is pretty much within 10 yards. Obviously, there's an anomaly here, which, you, you know, are always going to get, but a lot tighter between miss hits. You know, you can't see so many miss hits here. Nothing's gone less than 170, so they are more forgiving, you know, obviously from trying to increase the ball flight a little bit. And, um, you know, my best shot is no real further than what it were with the 2019 model. So I think they've done a great job here. And what I wanted to show you as well was the club head speed here at 90.2. And the club head speed with the 2019 model at 89.4. It's within one miles per hour average. So, you know, there's, there's no, you know, I was fully warmed up when I did this test. I mean, if we look at smash factor as well. You can see with the 2021 model, I did have some miss hits in there, you know, one, two, three, one, two, nine. You know, we'll look at the 2019 model, you know, they're exactly the same, one, two, four, one, two, seven, so still a couple of miss hits, but look at the drop off, 165, 163, 2021 model, we look at that smash factor, 123, 171. 133, 178. So, you know, a lot more forgiving. A lot more forgiving for sort of miss hit shots and di tighter dispersion. And I think that is what a lot of people are going to be looking for in this new model. So, I think in conclusion, you know, I think it's quite safe to say that the new 2021 model isn't just a better looking club, it actually performs better. And it, it basically, you know, the critics that the 2019 model got. It's kind of answered really because you know it's quite clear to see that the dispersion on distance is a lot better you know so i think they've they've done really well with this one and you know you'll know from from some of the reviews that i've done you know I, i'm quite blunt in saying that i didn't or i don't believe that technology moves on as quick as you know manufacturers sometimes say because from testing clubs you don't always see that much of an improvement year after year but certainly with this model you know, I put my hands up and, you know, admit that I can see an improvement, you know, and, and that's all I can say on that point. So I hope you've enjoyed that review. Um, you know, get in the comments, guys. Let me know if you're using the 790, the 2017 or the 2019 model, if you're enjoying it and, um, and what you thought of the review as well. You know, obviously I'm still learning and I'm always listening and um, 
trying to improve. And um, you know, we're going to be testing a lot of irons in the next few weeks because I am genuinely in the market for a new set of irons. So if you're interested to see what iron I end up going for, then hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next week. Bye.